So I've been thinking about doing this for quite a while and never got around to it. Uh, this is a um, piece of FR2, I believe, uh, which is the phenolic uh, PC board material. It's not FR4. FR4 is fiberglass, FR2. The dielectric constant of the two are pretty close, a little bit different, but they're pretty close. And uh, this is a, a 62 uh, uh, mils or 1.6 millimeters, I believe. And it's, it's copper on one side, uh, but on the other side, there's nothing. And so I've attached a couple SMA connectors on the end, and I've uh, taken some, uh, some uh, copper tape and made a strip line, micro strip, uh, micro strip uh, transmission line. And um, I used an online, uh, actually it's a program, um, uh, Avago makes a, a program uh, that allows you to calculate uh, impedances of these things. And it said that um, in order for this to be 50 ohms, that the width of the trace needs to be 100 uh, 100 mils, uh, point, point 0.1 inches. And so this is about 0. 0.3 inches. Um, so it is three times too big. Um, and so we should have a very low, a low impedance. It shouldn't be 50 ohms. It should be, it should be something very low. And so I've uh, calibrated a, uh, calibrated my nano VNA and, uh, we will uh, put the nano VNA into this side, and I will terminate the other end with 50 ohms. And so, if everything were perfect, we would see uh, everything stay at, at stay at 50 ohms, and uh, we see that we're not. So we are traveling uh, way out here to uh, 18.4 ohms and up here is 23 ohms and then here at 900 megahertz it comes back around to 46 ohms so it's not too bad there but at uh, it seems to be it's worse maybe over here at, at, at uh, 468 megahertz, uh, it's very, very bad. So uh, let's go ahead and remove some width. Uh, let's see here, let's use a ruler to be more exact. So uh, these connectors are in the way. So let's get rid of those. And I will surgically remove some of our micro strip width. Okay, so let's get rid of this. All right, so we removed maybe 50 mils. Sorry for the uh, metric viewers, but we anyway, we made it smaller. So let's see what that did. And I think our little circle is smaller. And uh, so now, of course, we start at uh, 50 ohms uh, at uh, 36 megahertz. And here it is um, 500 megahertz. No, 387 megahertz. Wait a minute, marker. Yeah, 387 megahertz and 22 ohms. And over here, it's around 25 ohms. And so we are still too fat. Okay. So still too fat. And we know that the optimum here is around, um, is around uh, 100. 100 mils. So what I need is a very, very short ruler. Let's see if I can find one of those.
Is that short enough? Oh, almost, almost. I think that'll work. All right. All right, so let me see if I can remove a lot of what's left over. Let's see. Okay. The trace I'm taking off is probably the exact width of 50 ohms. I think we're still too wide, but we're getting there. So that's narrower. Let's put this back on. And our 50 ohm load. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, very nice. Very, very nice. We are very close now. Um, let's see, 41 ohms, 43 ohms, uh, 44 ohms. Yeah, so it's, it's very, very close now. So that might be good enough for a lot of intended purposes, but uh, I think we can get a little bit better. The calculation said uh, 100 mils, 0.1 inches, should be 53 ohms. My calculation was all correct if I entered all the right numbers. So let's go ahead and remove more. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove this. All right, this should be very close. It looks about like 100 mils to me. Let's measure it. Yeah, that's almost exactly 100 mils. So, uh, we are thinner. So remember, 100 mils, 62 mils of thickness, full black, full uh, back plane of copper. That's a microstrip. And put this on. And we are nice little loops right at the middle there. So we are measuring, uh, oh, we made it a little too much, maybe a little too much. We are uh, 50 ohms there, 50 ohms at uh, 50 kilohertz, uh, 56 ohms at 200 megahertz. Uh, 67 ohms at 500 megahertz. Then it loops in to 60 ohms at 66 megahertz, 666 megahertz. And at 750 megahertz, it is 49.6. So yeah, so uh, we took just a little bit too much off. A little bit too much off. Um, Now we can do fun things like this. <laughs> I have no idea what that would do. Uh, yeah, put some funny little curly cues on it. Uh, so this is where the magic of uh, of microstrip stuff comes in is putting little uh, capacitors and inductors in little strange shapes. Um, but now I have a starting point. Uh, I have basically a uh, transmission line of 50 ohms. Oh, close enough. Yeah, let me, uh, I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, so uh, we should find some shapes online and uh, put those shapes on here and we should get uh, certain results. Uh, okay, I'm trying to get the glare off of the uh, Nano. 
Um, but I put this into uh, through measurement. So the yellow trace is the uh, through transmission and the Smith chart is showing the uh, impedance of the circuit. And we have about a 1.8 dB loss from end to end of our little transmission line. Um, so it's calibrated with one of these. So it might be a little less than that because I just put in a second one. So I didn't do a, a calibration, a perfect calibration. Anyway, it's close enough. Um, so uh, I've seen people do this. <laughs> now, I'm just, I have zero idea what I'm doing. I really have no idea what I'm doing. But I've seen little circuits with bow ties in them. And I know this adds capacitance. And uh, so I'm going to add one there. And I'm going to add one over here. Just for fun, I have no idea what that does. I have no theory, I have no nothing. I just want to see if you get any changes at all to the signal. And look at that, whoa, we're getting something different. <laughs> uh, so what do we do? Uh, let's see, we certainly added a bunch of inductance. I mean, a uh, capacitance, uh, no, inductance. Yeah, inductance is up, uh, capacitance is down. And so we've introduced at least uh, like 14 nanohenries. Is that right? I can't read it. Yeah, 14 nanohenries uh, in the up direction. And uh, so we're up here around 19 ohms, 10 nanohenries. And you can see that uh, we've basically built a um, low pass filter. The um, High frequencies are being attenuated. So oh, it just takes too long. Uh, so if I take, oops, I take my little marker and zoom it over here to uh, 820 megahertz, I am have a loss of 7.8 dB. And if I zoom it over here, uh, I only have a loss of a quarter dB. So basically, we have created a low-pass filter, cool, <laughs> with dubious uh, impedance performance. <laughs> and that's our little bow tie. So uh, I'm going to read up about uh, microstrip circuits and uh, see if I can't maybe build a filter and stuff. The problem is uh, most of these... Um, Microstrip techniques are good above a gigahertz. Um, below a gigahertz, things just start to get way too big um, to you to uh, create useful things. Now this is a pretty big circuit board, so I might still be able to get some one gigahertz filters. Maybe I can make an 800 megahertz bandpass filter or um, something along those lines. But um, like I said, I have no no idea what I'm doing. I just wanted to see if uh, if this is something even feasible or not. So looks like it is. Uh, so yeah, let me uh, let me play with it. If anybody uh, knows of any good references, let me know.